Hello and welcome, a brand new programme for Preston North End fans around the world. This is the Weekend Warm-Up. Coming up on show number one, an exclusive chat with head coach Frankie McAvoy. Peter Ridsdale updates us on all club matters. Former North Ender Kevin Kilbans in Canada to look ahead to the new season. And so much more. All to come on the weekend warm-up. And a big warm welcome to Preston North End fans all around the world. This is the weekend warm-up, hoping to give you some exclusive insight into the match ahead for North End, as well as some chats to look ahead to what we hope will be a successful season and where better place to start than with our head coach, Frankie McAvoy. His first full season in charge here at Preston North End. And that's where we start with how the summer's gone and what's in store for Preston North End in this season's championship. Frankie, thanks for this. You're welcome, Sam. Season nearly upon us now. Um, how has it been up to this point for you? Yeah, I think pre-season has been very eventful. Uh, we started with a good schedule uh, in terms of games, going to St Andrews and, you know, the plan for how we were going to try and get everybody as many minutes as we could, get as nearly everybody we had within the squad up to speed. We wanted to add, you know, the ones that we knew we could get early in terms of uh, signings, you know, Liam, who we'd obviously done in the permanent, Matthew all Sunday, Sepp uh, coming back in and loan and obviously they were the ones that we looked at to get done early, Izzy Brown, uh, and unfortunately the, the Izzy incident uh, has probably had a big impact on us for a day or two, to be honest. It, it really rocked myself as the coach and obviously the, the backroom team and the players because we could see them getting better, really enjoying it, it really fitted into the, the, the camaraderie of the group, you know, he loved it and we were really excited about him. We gave him the chance against Celtic and then from he injured himself just before the Bolton game was a, was a bit of a, a sore one for us, if I'm being honest. And the way he did it as well, it wasn't even like it was an impact one or it was no, just... Nothing. Yeah, it was just, just one of the things that, that happened, Simon. And, you know, you, you look, you say, God, could we turn the clock back and things like that. But it was just one of these things that, that you can't explain. You know, I feel really heartbroken for him, to be honest. I know he was, but the big thing is we've had Patrick Bauer, who has come back from seven months out with it, and hopefully he can be a, a good help to TSA and the backroom team, as I said to you, the medical team, sports science team here are excellent. So hopefully we can get him back in the, the road to recovery. So in terms of you learning maybe as much as anything as well, and that easy one was probably a good example of that, because this is the first full season that you've had where, I mean, you're the gaffer now. So what, what's changed for you this year? Yeah, well, a lot of more pressure than what I've had before, actually. So, uh, but listen, it's good. You know, I, I must admit, it's great. What you've got to try and do is, you know, be fair and mindful to everybody. The guys there are desperate who have been in loan to come back and show you that they deserve to be part of the squad. The guys who have, who have been here for a good number of years, uh, are desperate to still, you know, show you that they deserve to be in, in your starting lineup. And the ones that we added, you know, in the January transfer window, uh, I've got a great opportunity and a chance to come in and say, well, this is the first pre-season with the club as well. So hopefully you pick me. So, but it's been great. It's been really good. Gally's first pre-season, excuse me, as uh, as being a coach rather than a player. Uh, and Steve Thompson's been with us for, for a good number of years anyway, and you obviously Mike Pollitt, uh, the goalkeeping coach, coming in. But the, the big thing was, you know, with Declan, who missed the last party last season, Patrick, as I'd mentioned before. So it was good to get, you know, everybody here to try and work with them right from the beginning with full focus and trying to be the best we could be leading up to Hull City. And that's where everything's been geared to. And I think some of the fixtures we took, there was glamorous ones, but straight away we start with Bamber Bridge, 
were desperate to go and see the fans. Some of the players were desperate to get the fans back in. And God Almighty, it gets rained off. And we were absolutely, we were, we were, we were gobsmacked, to be honest. And then that for first opportunity for a lot of us to, to be in front of the fans we, we, was, was a kicking, well, no one to say exactly what it was, but it, but it, but it, but it was. <laughs> we a, can guess where you felt yeah, like getting kicked. It was a sore one for us all, to be honest. And, you know, that, that was, was difficult. Then, obviously, we managed to play in front of him at Bolton, but even the two, two games in Scotland, you know, St. Johnson and Celtic, we thought if COVID uh, restrictions could be removed a bit, you might be able to get fans there. Unfortunately, you know, that wasn't to be the case either. And we, we knew about the Man City and the Man United games, and we went, well, what a chance to, to obviously, hopefully get fans to see that. And I don't need to tell you about the Manchester United game, but wow, that was a dagger to the heart for everybody here because we felt, look, it'd be a great opportunity chance playing in front of up to, you know, more than 15,000. And it, was, it would have been a great chance for the fans just to, to see the players and for us to, to see them. Because as I've said to you before, I've said to many people, football's nothing without the fans. Absolutely nothing in the Euros. I think it's whetted everybody's appetite to get them back in. And I'm really looking forward to that on Saturday, to be honest. So touch wood, maybe that's all the bad luck gone in pre-season. Oh, well, I hope so. Fingers crossed, and whatever else we have to do to do that as well. More from Frankie coming up in the rest of the show. But first of all, as we look ahead for the first chance to get back to Deepdale to see North End in action since March of last year, feels like forever. To whet your appetite, here's the top five goals from pre-season. Ledson looks for the ball in behind for Moweni, who's done well again to keep himself on side, sets it back for Barkhazen. It's three for Preston North End. Moweni again, crucial in the build-up play. It all came from Vandenberg's header out. It was finished off by Barkhazen. Harrop has it now, looking to pick the passes. Two on two at the back, and Maguire's got through here, one on one. The goalkeeper goes down early, and Sean Maguire lifts it over him into the back of the net. It's a seventh for Preston North End, a second for Sean Maguire. Reese back to White, 25 yards out centre of the pitch. He does try a shot, oh, and it goes into the top corner. Ben Whiteman with his first goal of pre-season for Preston North End. He was given chance on the edge of the box to get his head up. It may well have gone in with help of the upright and even off the back of the goalkeeper. Comes out for Barcase and he's got plenty of space here. Measures the cross Great in. Ball in. And it's Thomas, it's the Carlist, who scores. What he said if you're on the field, the master of minutes, all the way to introduce yourself. Well, if you were nervous before, he won't be now. Bayliss, those strides away That's with it. Pass. He now finds Rodwell Grant, he's peeled off lovely. Rodwell Grant counts it into the bottom corner in front of the travelling Preston North End supporters. A great moment for Joe Rodwell Grant, the 18 year old. Great movement, he timed the run, took the ball into his path wonderfully well, and then just caressed it beyond Amos into the back of the net. Well, hopefully that has got you in the mood for this weekend's opener against Hull City. If you haven't got your tickets yet and you still want to go, of course you can do. Tickets on sale via the Preston North End official website, myp&e.com. You can even print out your own ticket if you've got a printer or you can collect them in person at the ticket office where if you want to turn up and purchase your ticket, it will be open right up until kickoff. Hopefully we'll see you there. If you can't get there, We'll tell you before the end of the show exactly how you can watch the season's opener. Now, Greg Cunningham back in Preston North End colours. You might have watched him on iFollow p &E over the last season. But this is his first chance to see us, the fans, once again. And us, of course, the chance to see him. And Greg has told us that he can't wait. You know, return of the 12th man. Um, it's, yeah, first time since, since I've been back. So... I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, you know, we we want to make sure, you know, that we put in a performance that uh, that that the fans can be be proud of. You know, they've been away for a long time. Um, you know, these last 18 months or so have been have been tough times for everyone. So 
it's nice that we can get fans back in and, and enjoy watching live football again. Speaking to Frankie yesterday, he kind of urged the fans to, to get behind you and, and show up in the numbers. Is that something that you echo? Will that help you on the pitch? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've said from, from minute one since I come to the club, the fans have been amazing. And, you know, regardless of, of the times that we're going through, they've always had our backs. And, and that's, that's something that sticks with you throughout your career. And, um, yeah, I'm looking for them. Hopefully, hopefully they'll, they'll show up in the numbers tomorrow and um, create the atmosphere like, like they've always done at Deepdale. And if you want to watch the full interview with Greg Cunningham, you can do right now. Well, actually, wait till the end of the programme, but you can watch it on iFollow p &E. Right, let's hear from a former North End player and still a North End fan, St Gregory's boy, Kevin Kilban, currently living in Canada, born and brought up within a stone's throw of Deepdale, probably threw a few stones when he was a kid as well. But let's start with why Kilban is in Canada. Yeah, so hello, Kevin. Uh, you are the other side of the Atlantic right now. So how are you and what are you doing over there? <laughs> well, I'm living here uh, and I'm great. I'm very, very good. Um, yeah, I, I moved here just pre-COVID, actually right on COVID. So I arrived here in Canada on uh, Friday the 13th of March in 2020 with the feeling of maybe getting back over a short period of time. Uh, but that's not been able to happen. I've had to down tools, I suppose, here and get myself uh, maybe the life I, I, I'm leading now as speeded up or it's been speeded up for me just with covid uh and i'm sure like many people uh, the lives have changed in the last year or two and it's just been down to what's happened really circumstances but i'm delighted i'm happy um i've been doing bits and bobs on the tv over here with uh, with canadian with the canadian network tsn and that's pretty much the extent of it so it's been great and i know that you've been staying in touch with north end because one of your mates keeps you up to date with how North End are doing. We've had yeah. some conversations about it. How do you feel about yeah. the new season? Yeah, well, we, we actually can get the odd game or two here in the uh, on the Zone Canada, pick up some of the games, not all of the games. So it's select games and you might pick up uh, various highlights and things like that. So, yes, I have been watching uh, quite a few of the games from last season. And of course, yes, uh, some guy that I know from from Preston does like to keep me up to date uh, regularly enough with the results and what's going on around the club. So yeah, I'm I'm fairly in touch with what's happening, uh, and it's always that little bit of optimism when a, when a season starts. So how do you feel about the new season? Um, I'm looking forward to the new season. I think like most North End fans, we realise that we're way behind a lot of the other clubs in terms of finances and, and where they are maybe in, in a building process across the last few years. Um, but I think new, a new season gives optimism and that's the way it will always be. So let's just see how this season progresses and hopefully get off to a good start and maintain that across the course of the year. I know it's a very, very long time ago, but when you were at North End, your pre-season, what were the nerves like going into the very first game? Well, it, it was absolutely more so nervous in those days. I, you know, I was I was a teenager just breaking into the into the first team. So I remember that first season. Uh, when was it? Ninety five. It seems so long ago now, and it was a long time ago now. But I do remember. Just I think I used preseason as a, as a way to try to work myself into the squad. You, you use some preseason friendlies to try to impress, but you just try and you know, get to the, the your peak fitness level early. Try to show the manager that you're ready when you're going to be called upon. And uh, fortunately enough for me, I remember making my debut down at Torquay, down at Play, Plainmore. Uh, I think we won 4-0 that day. And I, I came off the bench with about 20 minutes to go. So it was nice to get a bit of game time. But I think the way that season panned out, it was perfect for me and my development for, for, uh, for future. You uh, you obviously used to play for Hull City, which is another good reason yeah. to have taught you for this game. Once in the Premier League, uh, last season, of course, they won uh, the third tier. They won League One. So as champions, they're now back in the championship. What sort of a team, what sort of a squad have they got now? Well, I think with Hull, obviously, coming down out of the Premier League and then being relegated to League One, uh, they had a lot of trouble with getting the finances in order once they came down from the Premier League. I was still there at that time, of course. Um, but once my contract had finished, I, I, had a, I had a coaching job as well for a short time there at Hull City. So it, it was, it was always, always about maybe uh, progression from within. 
in terms of bringing youngsters through, try to get them game time, try to get them into the first team. And that's the way that it's been. It's been trying to, they've tried to, to utilise a lot of the young talent that they've brought through, try to get them progressed and almost sell them on. So that's the way that it's been for Hull City. And I think now, certainly um, under Grant McCann and, and Cliffy Byrne, who you and I both know, uh, Crabbers, we've, we've known him for a number of years. I think he thought he was actually going to lose his job at one time when they got relegated from the Premier, uh, from the from uh, the Championship, should I say? But they rebuilt in League One. The, as again, again, as I said, a lot of those younger players were able to get more game time, and they built from there. And now they're in a stronger position than they were two or three years ago, even though they probably don't have as much uh, financial stability behind them in terms of you know the parachute payments that they had at one time. So I think they're in a better position. I think they've got a good coaching team there and I think they've got a good squad and ready to build from that, yeah. So just finally, I know we did touch upon it, but North End this season, we want the promised land. We want North End to finally get in the Premier League, the first time in the top flight since Sir Tom Finney retired back at the start of the 1960s. Can it be the year? Ah, oh, I... I talked on finances. I think we, we know more and more now, which is it isn't great that finances are dictating more and more. But you look at Brentford getting promoted last season. Look, look what Barnsley did in getting to the playoffs as well. I think they're realistic goals for, for North End. I think they're the sort of teams that, that North End can look at. Look at Burnley and what Burnley have achieved over the last 10 years in, in getting to the Premier League, first of all, being relegated and building from that. That has to be something, well, it is achievable because these teams have done it. Very, very difficult, don't get me wrong, but the promised land is something that you and I have both looked to. You know, since I started watching football as a kid, I remember we were both watching North End in the old fourth division as it was. And I think it, it has never really been uh, something that we've looked on as attainable. There has been a, obviously a couple of playoff defeats, playoff final defeats, but we've always thought of it as something that can we get there? Maybe it's not achievable, but it is achievable. I think if there is that belief from within the club, which I'm sure that's the, going to be the message coming out, yes, uh, then the supporters have to draw on that. It's it's about getting a great start. And I know it's easy to say, but get that good start and build from it and try and hang on. They've been on the verge of the playoffs in, in the last four or five years, but it just hasn't been able to uh, to maybe to to complete or or see through that form that they showed early on before Christmas and they, they faded away towards the back end. So, yes, it is achievable, but I just hope that it's not going to be too far beyond them come Christmas time and then they're chasing the tails, trying to get the results in place. But uh, hopefully a good start's in place for them. Thank you, Kevin. Shall we speak to you through the season? Thank you. Yes, it would be my pleasure, Simon. Now, unlike Kilban, who's out in Canada, if you are coming to the game this weekend, you'll be warmly welcomed by a brand new fan zone. All the details are on the official website, peony.com. But to put a bit more meat on the bone, is Peter Ridsdale. The challenge with uh, the relationship with, between the club and the supporters is that um, supporters quite reasonably and properly want us to be uh, innovating and offering uh, supporters facilities that sometimes feels easier to do than in practice it is. I mean, we've had a number of stuttering starts with fan zones. We looked at doing it in the old club shop that's now been flattened and is a car park. We were hoping to get back um, some of the space behind the Sir Tom Finney stand from the Football Museum. And again, that hasn't happened to date for various reasons. And of course, we've looked at Finney's, which currently isn't. Um, a facility that we own. It's actually rented out to Heartbeat and it may well be in the not too distant future we get that back but we haven't yet secured that. So there's always been a desire to provide a fan zone. The difficulty we've had is the right location. So for the whole city game we will be launching a fan zone. We hope it will be well received. Uh, it'll be our version of what our supporters have been telling us that they want and they've seen elsewhere and I'd hope that it's used and, and enjoyed. Um, we still want a permanent solution because the sad thing about you know, where we are in the northwest of England is it rains quite a lot in the winter and it's all very well having a marquee and a fan zone and whatever else, but in the middle of winter when it's blowing a gale and pouring down, um, it may not be the, per the, the ideal permanent solution, but certainly in the short term, it's gonna be there. We hope people enjoy it um, and our supporters have been very patient and this is our chance to say look we have been listening but it's taking a lot of time because we want the right solution um, you know football is only about the supporters nothing else 
and the fact that we've had to continue to go about our normal business of um, trying to win football matches but without our supporters there has been an experience that I hope we don't see again. You know, we want this football match uh, on Saturday to be the start of as reminding ourselves what it's all about. And football, as I say, is about the fans. And um, it's going to be very good to see our supporters there. I hope they get behind the team. I hope they get behind Frankie because they weren't there to see that um, eight games that Frankie enjoyed. The, the, the fact we won the last four games on the bounce. I think it's a while since we've achieved that for straight wins. Um, and for our supporters to be there seeing it in person rather than on iFollow or reading about it in the paper uh, is something that we've been... It's been a very frustrating period and we're delighted that we can now uh, achieve that against Hull City. And if you want to hear the full interview with Peter Ridsdale, you can do so on iFollow PNE. Right, let's get back to that exclusive chat now with head coach Frankie McAvoy. We've talked about the summer and now we're looking ahead to that new season and his very own fan club. His wife and his family who go to all the North End games, they're quite loud as well. You won't miss them if you're sitting anywhere near Sharon at least. But that's where we start in this chat with Frankie McAvoy. Just in terms of the momentum, because your eight games when you took over was, were phenomenal and that's obviously why you got the job as well. So how or what can you do to keep what momentum you had there moving into this new season now? That, that's, that's the big part, Simon. And to be honest, we'll work really good as a group. We've worked in our style of play. We've tried a couple of different things, training uh, and in, in match days as well. We've had a look at a couple of different formations. Uh, at the moment, the, the one that seems to suit us best is where the two strikers up top. And that's the one that we'll be trying to look forward to going forward. That did us really well in the, the, the eight games. I said we learned a lot from the Brentford game. We changed it to a back four and we, we got hurt. I got hurt in that day, to be honest. But the biggest thing is learning for your mistakes. And the group, I, cu I couldn't praise them high enough. To be honest, the next five games, they drew one and won four. And it was the first time they'd won four in a row since, you know, I think it was uh, over four years. So what they've done is they've set great building blocks, great foundation. And what we've done is we've worked really, really hard to try and make sure that on Saturday we're ready to go. First and foremost, we want to try and make Deepdale a, a difficult place for anybody to come, no matter who it is. And what we need for that to happen is to get the whole support behind us. Because if you've got the support behind you, chanting for you to do well, then it's like a 12th man. I don't need to tell people that. The players will tell you that themselves. They tell me. There's nothing better than hearing people driving you on. Uh, better than them giving you a bit, you know, They've been away for the game for, for quite some time. So we're really, really looking forward to a positive attitude on Saturday. And hopefully we're, we're good enough to, to get a positive result. And I, I know that you know, and I know that your family knows how special and important the Deep Down crowd is because um, I've sat quite near your family for quite a few matches and Sharon's probably the loudest out of all oh, of them. I think it's safe to say that, that you all understand exactly what Preston means and what, what the fans mean to Preston. Yeah, we do indeed. And to be quite honest, I, I've not actually said this before, but we've, we've came down to Preston since uh, Declan Mull, this boy's 29 now. And he was under, I think he was under 10s. So we've been always visiting Preston, coming with football clubs uh, to visit UCLan. Uh, and we've done that for a number of years and we would always take in, we would always bring Hamilton Ackies laterally, we would bring all the kids to the game that they played at Easter weekend if, you know, uh, they, were, they were at home. So we know exactly what it's like, particularly be, being a Scot, you know, Preston's probably the nearest club, you know what I mean, uh, to, to people, you know, in Scotland, down south. So we've always had a good affinity with them, to be quite honest. and. You know, moving from Norwich to Preston, when Alex asked me to come here, and uh, although I had a, a, a son still in Norwich, and my grandson was only, you know, he, he wasn't even a year old when I got the chance to come here, I knew it, it was probably the right thing to do. I would never have thought that this would have culminated in me getting the opportunity chance to be the head coach, but you never know what can happen to people in life. So 
for me, I'm delighted I took the chance with the, the eight games to go. I'm delighted we did well. Uh, but like I said, that's in the past. What we need to do now is focus and try to do our best going forward. You've, you said about your mixed uh, pre-season games. I think Hull City's have had a similar sort of run really themselves. It, it, more about fitness, for probably for, possibly for both of you? Yeah, it's, listen, it's the biggest thing. Every game that you want to play in, you obviously want to win. But what you need to do is you need to be fair to, to your squad. Guys need to be given opportunities and chances to, to be fit and to be ready because you just never know what's around, you know, the corner. As I said to you, Izzy Brown's uh, the ideal example. You know, we end up, we've lost them for quite a considerable time now. So you just never know what can happen. Uh, but for me, some games that I thought we did okay in, others we need to, to improve on. But the biggest and most important thing is that everybody's had a fair crack at the whip. And we'll be looking forward to trying to go and win our game on Saturday against Hull. We hopefully the best 11 that we think can go and win is the game. And they're obviously a brand new promoted team won the championship last season with, with Grant McCann. So they'll be coming with their bit to teeth and they bring a few fans as well. Is, is this arguably one of the tougher tests that you could have got to open the season? Well, listen, I said before, Simon, every game in the championship is a tough game. No matter who it is, you know, when you're capable, anybody's capable of beating anybody in their day. But you know yourself, they're a team that has been in League One, they won the, the, they won the league. They've come up, they'll be desperate to do well. They'll know we want to get back down. You know, if you look at Rotherham and Wickham, eh, sometimes you just, you just need to try and get them in a day that, that you're hopefully better than them. But I know sitting here that I've got a group of hungry players there that are desperate to do well. A lot of people wrote them off at the back end of last season. We know ourselves we didn't do well enough at the, the beginning and then in, in, in the middle. But at the end of it, when the pressure was on, they, they stood up and we managed to pull ourselves away from a precarious position, eh, having a dogfight in the last day of the season. And what we need to do now is try and build on that and make sure that we can start to build in winning games. Just finally then, in terms of what the aim is for this season, I know winning matches is always the aim. I don't know what, how I would love the season to end up, but realistically, what what are Preston aiming for this year? Listen, we're going to try and win as many games as we can. I've said to you, you know, at the outset, we need to make Deepdale an extremely difficult place for anybody to come. I don't want anybody coming and want to love to come and play at Deepdale other than us. Do you know what I mean? I want to be no one to come and play at Deepdale because they know what they're going to face. We're going to have a raucous crowd. They're going to get behind the fans. Sorry, get behind the team. They're going to be vocal as much as they can be and support the team through thick or thin. And what we will do is we'll give it our best to try and win every game we play at home and be as equally as positive going away, no matter who we play. But for me, and everybody's desperate to try and get to the Premier League, that's everybody's aim once in the Championship. You know, that's, you know, that's the gold piece of gold that everybody's desperate to try and crave for. So our task is we need to take it step by step you know, and aim as high up that league as we can. And if we can get near the playoff spots, then you just never know what can happen. Fingers crossed. Touch wood. Fingers everything crossed. that goes to the hundred percent behind it. Best of luck. I appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you. Fingers crossed. Pleasure. Everything crossed. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. And that is your weekend warm-up. Hopefully now you've got everything you need ahead of Preston North End's opener against Hull City in the Championship. If you've not got your ticket yet, you can buy them online, myp&e.com. You can print them out yourself if you're that way inclined, or you can collect them in person at the ticket office. If you've already got your ticket, get there nice and early. We've got the brand new fans on, lots to entertain you and the family food, drink, and a little bit of live music. And just between you and me, get into the ground early-ish because there's a secret presentation to Paul Gallagher, which he doesn't know about yet. So just our little secret on that one. Don't forget, after the game as well, the fan zone will still be open if you want to chat to your mates about hopefully our first win in the opening match of the season. And if you can't come and join us at Deep Bell, perhaps if you're not ready yet or you're living somewhere around the world and can't quite reach us, all the details of how to stay in touch with the game 
are online now. That's it. Hopefully you can like and subscribe. We'll be back the same time next week for Preston North End's Weekend Warm-Up. Come on, you whites!